Another day, another dawn. Is this how we're starting? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> All right. I, every time we start it with another day, another dawn, let's go for it. Hey, babes. Hey, babes. So the last episode was pretty great. It did well. Alhamdulillah. People loved it. But guys, don't get used to it because that's going to be a every now and then a thing. It's a treat. I'm trying. We're trying to figure out how to do this. Just like bear with us. We're rolling with the punches. It doesn't show. You sure? You can remove it if you want. Yeah, I think we're fine. All right. Yeah. I mean, we have to introduce me. Oh, it's a babe. They know you. It's Afa. I mean, yeah, but still. Okay, uh, Dad isn't isn't. <laughs> Dad isn't in the studio today. It's just Afa because we're about to go into Q4, so it's been very busy all around for everyone. Good to be here, Lails. Good to be here, indeed. <laughs> Uh, I know you always want to punch me. Anyways, Somewhere. no, honestly, it's good to be here. Super excited. Shall we get into it? Uh huh. <laughs> Man, it's just awkward to start this. I mean, Hello, babe, no one saw you do this on camera, so they just see me react awkwardly. It's just a weekly thing. You know what? I'm going to just be here. Just <sighs> guys love me. <laughs> they sure do. No, no, honestly, on a side note, on a serious note, it's good to be here. We are about to not make an episode this week. Yeah, because on the way here, my, I had a, an attack on my eye, just started watering. My eyeliner here is just completely gone. And I feel very, like, congested, so it's very strange. But but this is a priority, so you have to make it happen. The show must go on, as the they say. The show must go on, as indeed. All right, um, we had a lot of questions from the last episode with your dad but we also have some new questions and new topics oh, that even. we didn't go over yeah. yeah so let's um let's do like a little bit of a warm-up actually you know what's so funny is the first set of topics is really not a warm-up it's really intense okay but let's get into it okay okay it's so funny because I try to not make this an interview thing but like sometimes it come a- comes across okay. as an interview but I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go in really deep in here. But how does a person know they truly believe in God? Okay, so I know we we never plan the answers in advance, but you did send me the questions yesterday, and I skimmed through them. I was hoping because Dad wouldn't be here that I would sit do some research and maybe come up with some, you know, nice information to share with people. But Subhanallah, I didn't even need to. Because the answer kind of came to me. So how do you know if you believe in God? I'm going to humble myself and say, yesterday I didn't know if I was equipped enough to be able to answer the question. So I called my dad and he said something. He said, it's when you have a yearning for God. But then he was like, that might be a little too deep and too intense for some people. And then we had to cut the conversation short because I took my mom out to dinner. And then we were like, we'll come back to it, right? And then subhanAllah, my friend sends me a video of this uh, dude. You know what? I am going to take the second to get his name because he deserves the shout out. Um, Bismillah. Let me just find it. Okay. He has um, a page on Instagram called Muslim Hub Club and his name is Osama Shurafa. Okay. She sends me a video by him where he's reciting a poem that he says is by Imam Ali, but it's not by Imam Ali. It's actually by um, Abba Faris al-Hamadani. And just the last part is by him. And then the beginning is other verses. And they so I don't know how he got it, but it's just basically verses put together. And the last part is by um, Abu Faris al-Hamadani. And it actually answers your question. So subhanAllah, it's the one question you asked me yesterday. <laughs> and then God sends the answer. So I'm going to recite the poem because I memorized it immediately. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'll say it in Arabic. I didn't memorize the English like translation of it because there's no need. I'd rather just read it. But I'll, I'll say the Arabic one. You can say the Arabic one and then the English. You can just, you know. I'll recite it. I'll yeah. read, but I'll read it. I won't because I don't know it by heart. I just memorized the Arabic. So to answer your question. Sorry, that's the. No, the, no. The backstory. But to answer your question of how do you know if you genuinely believe in God? My dad would answer. It's that you have a constant yearning for Allah. And that could be either to one day meet him, inshallah, or in your life, you just yearn to thank him or yearn to, to remember him, his remembrance, right? So there's this poem by um, multiple people, but the ending is by Abu Faris al-Hamadani. 
and it goes like Habibi la ya'dilu habibu wa la li siwahu fi qalbi nasibu habibun ghaba an basari wa sam'i walakin fi fu'adi ma yaghibu ya habiba qalbi ma li siwaka farham al yawm mudhniban qad ataka ya raja'i wa rahati wa sururi qad aba al qalbu an yuhibba siwaka falaytaka tahlu wal hayatu mariratun walaytaka tarda wal anam ghidabu وليت الذي بيني وبينك عامر وبيني وبين العالمين خراب إذا صح منك الود فالكل هين وكل الذي فوق التراب تراب and it's basically the way i see it just a poem for how much god is everything just the remembrance of him in everything and just the yearning to be with him so that's my answer for how you know you really believe in God. Okay, so for those who don't really understand the full... I will translate yeah. it. <laughs> All righty. I didn't memorize the English. I just didn't see the English. Or, you yet. know, even what you understood from as well. Uh, I understand the Arabic, alhamdulillah. But um, the way it's written is poetic in English, so I'd rather not butcher with my like, oh, translation. Yeah. So the translation is, My love, no other love compares. No heart but mine for you declares. Though from my sight and ears you hide, in my, stool, in my soul you still reside. O oh, my beloved, none but you forgives the sinner who comes to you. My hope, my joy, my sweet delight, my heart loves none but you in sight. If only you are sweet and life is tough, and if you're pleased, that's more than enough. If all between us stand so strong, that the world's ties go right or wrong. For if your love is true and deep, all else is dust beneath our feet. That's... That's beautiful. It's a love poem for God, it's, basically. It's, it's a very beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, but I don't... Do you think that every person feels that same way to verify, you know, God's no, existence? I, I don't... I think if you love God, you should feel that way. Absolutely. If you have a genuine love for God, the way we were intended to love him, yeah, you yearn for him. It's the same way... Because... Not to dumb it down to that level, because relationships are beautiful and marriage is beautiful, but when you love your husband or your wife, don't you have a yearning to spend time with them, to Absolutely. see them, to see how they're doing? When you're shopping for yourself, you see a shirt that might fit them or they might like, and, oh, I want to surprise my, my partner with that, you know? So if you feel all these intense emotions for a partner, what do you think you should feel for God? Yeah. So, but how... How everyone loves God? No, but to, you're asking me. I can't, I can't state for the whole world, but how I know I believe in God is this podcast, for example. The, to constantly want to talk to people about him, you know? To want to show people, look at how beautiful he is, look at everything you're missing out on. It's the... I don't want to cry. It's the deep pain in my heart I feel when I see negative comments about Islam, you know? So that to me is, is how I know I believe in God. It's the protectiveness. It's the fear of, of please don't ever allow me to forget you. So, yeah. That's beautiful. Oh, again, crying so quickly, so soon. What's happening to me? I've turned into an emotional mush ball. Yeah, maybe should have started, <laughs> started it easy, but it's okay. No, you know what? This podcast is about... It is. God and finding him in any capacity. The center is God. You know what I mean? Yeah, the center, so, the sides, the in-between, the up, the down, everything. all of it. Oh, you just made it a movie. <laughs> <laughs> everything in between. No, that was very beautiful, babe. Honestly, thank you for sharing that poem. Thank you that for was, asking the question. It was really, really nice. Um, love you, Phoebe. You know... Hey. Love you, too. There we go. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I, I had a good thought. No, love you, too, babe. Uh, so, you know... Uh, in this life, we are always tested, right? Yeah. And I just wonder, or even maybe some, a lot of people wonder, why are we tested in this life? Like, why shouldn't life be easy, smooth sailing? Why are there tests? I will tell you why. I actually have a quote. <laughs> I actually have a quote that I will read. Let me find it. posted it on my story when I bought um I again I'm gonna butcher his name Dostovsky. that sounded good to me did it? it sounded legit to me okay 
Um, so this is so I bought his books. Uh, Bismillah. I got White Knights and I got Demons, and then I just fell in love with them. That I started looking more into his work, and this is from his book The Devils. So why does God put us through tests? This quote to me is one of the clearest answers you can get. And despite it being so clear, very few will understand it. And you also have Khalil Gibran and other people who have said the exact same thing. So Dostoevsky from The Devils, he wrote, but do you understand? I cry to him. Do you understand that along with happiness, in the exact same way and in perfectly equal proportion, man also needs unhappiness. If life was only ever happiness, and you had nothing to compare it to, you wouldn't know what happiness was. I know pain because I know the opposite of it. I know grief or happiness, sorry, because I've known grief. I know ease and peace because I've known struggle and strife. And, and it's very egotistical and border, borderline maniacal for you to have the audacity to expect that you can go about this world without suffering, without ever having your feelings getting hurt, without, without going through what God intended you to go through. Seven, eight billion people on this world and you expect that you will go through no suffering and you'll come out wise and educated and grateful and humble. That is an impossible equation. And, and the more important question to me is why would you even want that? You know, so why do we go through suffering? Because it is a necessity to feel happiness. That's, uh, I, you know what, you're so right. Not a lot of people do get that. Not a lot of people understand is that to feel happiness or to know the taste of it and to really understand it and to revel in it, they don't really understand that pain and trials and tribulations yeah. is so necessary because then at the end of the day, what is life? Yeah, you know, it is it is this roller coaster that we go through and a beautiful ride. Honestly, honestly, man, life is a beautiful ride. What, who is a better planner than God? Who is a better painter, a better cinema maker, a better a better choreographer than than everything we see around us? But people want to focus on the negativities and the pain. And I understand. I, I understand where it comes from. But in Sufism, we have this teaching and this hikmah of where we know the atrocities of the world. We're very aware, bro, especially with Palestine. Of course, we're very aware. It's just Palestine aside just the atrocities in general of life, we don't focus on it. Are we aware of it? Yes. But we focus on the beauty and the blessing that God sends our way because otherwise, what kind of a miserable prison do you just lock yourself into? It's a prison cell, you know? And then also, how 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 is that gratitude if you're showing God that, oh, I'm only focusing on the negative and then I'm turning this beauty that you've created into an abyss? Whose fault is it then? Is it is it mine or his? And it's never his. Does that make sense? Yeah, babe, it makes a lot of sense. But yeah, alhamdulillah. Okay. You know, you know how we have this thing sometimes when. <laughs> sometimes we know this person or have that friend where a lot of bad things happen to them, and then sometimes we, uh, uh, just out of the blue, we say, "Oh, um." <laughs> God is angry at you or you brought this upon yourself. Do you know what I mean? Like, okay. do you think that's true? So Islamically, I don't know the right verse or something to answer that. But but I will say I, I am of two minds. I am of two minds. I think yes and no. Because of the 99 names of Allah, he is vengeful and he is a punisher. Because as beautiful and as merciful and as loving and as caring and as phenomenal as he is, he also has the wrath of God that, that exists. It is a thing that exists, right? So, yes, I think, I think his wrath exists. And he could be or have wrath towards someone. That being said, I also think, and this is something my dad taught me, okay? So when I started this podcast... And it started blowing up and, you know, the little bit of fame or people recognizing you or the numbers being crazy, right? He, he looked at me and he was like, don't you dare ever take it for granted. 
or not be humble or to cover your eyes or to see your face because he said God loves you too much to let that happen to you he will take it all away in the blink of an eye so watch yourself and i didn't take that in a scary way i took that as wow i'm always protected god loves me so much that he'll never allow me to lead my soul astray and i think i said this to you yesterday but to me right now in the stage of my faith it's just a change in perspective rather than god hates me and he's punishing me it's god saving my soul he's leading me back in the right direction it's literally just a yeah just change your perspective it is all about perspective and even if a person feels that they are being punished i wouldn't even want to say punished though i just think it's that maybe like everything happens for Discipline. a reason It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's like when your parent you do something wrong and your parent disciplines you and then when you're older and wiser you're kind of like you learn God. from it like i think we that's always the point, say yeah. thank god our parents were so strict with us yeah you learn from it at the time we were like this is torture i have the worst parents in the world <laughs> <laughs> you know everyone else is so lucky their parents are so open minded but now that we're in our yeah. 20s and 30s alhamdulillah I I don't know what my soul would have turned into without my mom and dad being so strict and disciplined with me. Oh, absolutely. I mean, change in perspective. We would have been in trouble. Trouble. Trouble like Yeah. There's a lot of people out there just that willing, are in trouble. In trouble. I mean, just willing to take advantage of you and, you know, and if you didn't have your parents' guidance or even a bit of fear, yeah. you know, from your parents, a healthy dose of fear. Yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah, 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 I get you. But like if your parents tell you don't go there, don't do that or don't talk to a stranger, blah blah blah. Yeah. And you have some sort of a little bit of fear from that. Yeah. You would you would take yourself off of a sticky situation, no? Yeah. Absolutely. Alhamdulillah. But yeah, I think I think that's really important. It's just a change in perspective that oh, perspective is everything, babe. Hermione Granger. Oh, perspective It is everything. Right. Perspective. Guys, I'm very By the way, by the way, get ready because the second October 1st hits, I am fully in fall winter Christmas Attire. mode. Yeah, yeah, it's Halloween and I know astaghfirullah Halloween, but I'm just talking about the movies and Harry Potter and that fun stuff, just you talking know. Talking about the fun of it. The- but I'm you don't understand. <laughs> These are the best three months of my life. <laughs> so are you going to have a podcast episode of you wearing a Halloween costume? Babe, I think they'll come for me. <laughs> I'm joking with you. <laughs> I would, but I'd do something like either from a Tim Burton movie or something funny. Like I'm I, don't get me wrong, it's fun to like be sexy or whatever, but like I'm not into the whole mean girls bunny costume like that's not my vibe. Of course, but, of course. But like I love that Anahita did Rick and Morty. Like she she committed. I love that she did Corpse Bride and not in a sexy way like she fully committed to the to the caricature. I thought that was beautiful. Auzu billah. Allah azim. Corpse Bride is one of my favorite movies. Oh, absolutely. It is what it is. No, I'm so excited. I you know what? Summer is my favorite period of the year. We had a good summer. But there is something very beautiful about winter. Babe, I'm really excited for winter. Like mm. mob wife attire. You know what I mean? Even like the make although I I I don't want to lose my tan. خلاص listen, let's like we digress. We digress. Wait, by the way, winter in Dubai is summer everywhere else. We're still <laughs> we're going to the beach. What do you mean? I know, but I can't wear like red or dark lipstick. Oh, you know what? Let's park this. Um this question's a bit heavy to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. And I think honestly, let me know if you agree with this. I think that every single human being on this earth has questioned their faith and religion and even the existence of God. That to me I'll put, I'll tell you truly and honestly that I was in certain times and moments where I did question, okay, You know, uh is this all real? Like everybody has that, right? Mm-hmm. It's and it's not a shame or a sin to admit to it, right? We're human beings. There's just some things that are really beyond our grasp and understanding, right? Yeah. But so I've been in this situation alhamdulillah, it hasn't happened in a very long time and thank God, thank God that whenever I do get these thoughts or moments, I <laughs> like within five seconds i snap out of it i'm like what are you doing do you still get these thoughts no no i said i so said this was in the past yeah in the past yeah. 
No, now it's now no. Okay. Now no. Because I was gonna say I've never since I've known you. Oh no. Seen you question, but I know you used to. Because I used to. I'll go and I'll I tell would, the story. I'll be honest with you. It hasn't happened in a long time. But when it does, or if it does, I snap like within five seconds. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. you know, what are you thinking of? But it's normal, right? It is. It is okay. So here's the thing. It's normal. I don't like the word normal, but yeah, for lack of it a better happens. word, Let's it happens. Let's say it does. It, it is a natural progression on your way to finding your religion. Because here's the thing, though. You, you need to factor in so many factors, right? There are some people who grew up with the worst type of Islam. So their parents were like the, the strict religion. They make you hate religion, you know? And I don't blame these people for kind of dropping it and being like, no, you know, I, I want nothing to do with this anymore. I blame the person who puts hatred in that person's heart, you know? And... So that's so anyway, there are so many factors that that play into this. But let's go on you and me because we're just going to speak from a subjective experience and then maybe someone relates, maybe someone doesn't. I never not believed in God. So okay. alhamdulillah, this is one thing for me. I've never questioned the existence of Allah. I could not bring myself to do it. Mashallah. And and I don't know why. It's by his grace. I did question religion. Which to me now saying out loud sounds horrible. But I did. I questioned, is Islam even real? Is Christianity real? Is Judaism real? I questioned the existence of, of the prophets and the religions. And were they just a tale as old as time, like Greek mythology or Roman mythology? Because people need something to believe in. To the point where they created gods in Roman literature. You know, it, it is what it is in Greek literature. So I questioned the substance of religion because... I did not understand what the Prophet ﷺ was. And that's why I tell people, just go and read his life story. Read his last khutbah. Oh, you know what I mean? Mm. So that's my experience. My dad, actually we were on the phone today, subhanAllah, talking about this, that there was a time where he questioned the existence of Allah because he was surrounded by that negative form of religion that almost made your heart shut because they instill fear and shame in you. And Rohak, your soul was not built to survive shame. It's not built to live in shame. So he naturally refuted that and just rebuked it and wanted nothing to do with it. And he told me on the phone, he said, SubhanAllah, there was a lady, an old lady, and he's like, I'll never forget it. She said, if you do not believe in Allah and his existence, why is it that it's all you talk about? Because a lot of these atheists, it's not that they don't believe in God. It's, a, it's the mind that's, that's a barrier. The soul is behind that mind trying, fighting it, right? There's just a block. And if they're constantly only ever talking about God, what does that mean? It means your soul is just looking for him and it's looking for that sign or someone or that poem or that movie or that person like this old lady who just kind of wakes you up and goes like, he's there, you know? So that's my dad's story. But is it normal? Yeah. Yeah, it is, of course. Um, oh, I don't, I don't feel any shame or... No, you not shouldn't. that not that not that you're implying that I no, should that you be. shouldn't but like it's like what we discussed the last episode now I don't know if this relates to what we're discussing now Tell but me. to me it does okay. is sometimes you just need to take a step again we were born Muslims I was when we said don't inherit your religion yeah okay. so it relates to that you know what I mean like in a does. way so unlearn uh you know what I mean? So it does relate to that because like we said last time, your parents could have been good Muslims, they could have been bad hmm. Muslims. Now I was giving the example of bad Muslims who make you hate, God forbid, the religion. But regard, yeah, it, it's very normal. By the way, a lot of those stories that you see online of um, Ajanib and Europeans and white people and people from all over the converting. world. From, converting. We say reverting, converting. I don't know what the right term is. Reverting, sorry. Because eh, it's reverting. Born because Muslim. People, yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. But those people that you see reverting online and you hear their stories and you read their stories and you watch their videos, they'll tell you Islam was the one religion that allowed me to question and had an answer for every question. So this idea that you're not allowed to question things in Islam or question things 
that God decrees or, or, or that the Prophet ﷺ did, it's very demonic and it's very new. You are absolutely within your right and your prerogative to question and to ask and, and receive the right answers. That is your right. You're not, you're not meant to be brainwashed. You're not meant to be a sheep. God did not ask this of us. Relax, I find it a beautiful thing if someone has an intuitive mind and they want to know more. But number one, it's the way you ask. If you're asking with disrespect, that's not within your right. Because I wouldn't ask anything about Christianity or Judaism with disrespect. And number two, it's, it's Bismillah. Um, I think when you're asking, it's your soul wanting to know more. That's maybe a fatih that's just a grasp away. Mm. And it's unfortunate when you have people telling you you're not allowed to question or you're a kafir because of that. How else would you know? How else would you fall in love with this beautiful religion if not for the questions and the answers? Did you, um, did you ever come across this article? Um, I actually saw it. again. <laughs> yeah, um, tell me. Of this, uh, oh, what's, it's a Dutch guy, okay? Unfortunately, I don't know what his vocation is in life. Are you sure he's Dutch or Australian? Dutch. Okay. He's a Dutch guy. Okay. So he was such a Islamophobe, a hate like hater to Islam. He hated the religion so much. Mm. He was an Islamophobe, yeah, he basically. Yeah. Was he the one that was about to go bur- blow up a mosque? No, 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 no. Okay, that was in America. The, I'll not... tell you the story. Okay. Okay, okay. So he was such an Islamophobe and he actually wanted to write a dissertation and a novel proving that Islam is fake and false. I do know that. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So just I'll just continue for them. Go so for what it. does he do is he's obviously researching. He reads the whole Quran in English. And then he actually reverted back to Islam. And then like, <laughs> it's so funny because in the interview when he was talking, he starts laughing and he's like, yeah, like, you know, I set out on this journey to prove that Islam is, you know, false, not true. It's it's a lie. And he's like, I ended up convert converting to islam like subhanallah that's crazy but subhanallah this actually to me proves my point an atheist i don't know if he was an atheist but if maybe he believes in i God, don't know whatever but he's just someone who wants to prove islam doesn't exist right if if you don't believe in islam why is it all you can think about why is it consuming your mind your every waking thought yeah, this man went as far as to write a whole thesis or attempt to to just disprove the existence of islam because his soul needed Islam and wanted Islam. If he didn't believe in Islam, why are you so concerned with it? Leave it be, Habibi. Leave it be. You know what's so interesting is, um, you know, a lot of like the scientific miracles or scientific uh, studies they find or like even like about nature, earth, medicine, diseases, all of that, all of it is in the Quran. It's so... Not- um, not all of it, not most all of, of it, because a lot no. of it is is hocus pocus. <laughs> no, but by the a lot of t- modern day scientific studies are hocus pocus. No, no. no. So sorry. I let's say for example, let's give one example. Um, the baby, the embryo. Yeah. There's about black seed oil. Yeah. There's about honey. Honey, yes. There's about the fake surah teen. You know and what I mean? There's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of. There's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Babe. Alhamdulillah, Islam is the Quran is a is a is a hack on life. It's it's mm. insane. It is a holy book that when you read it, just it's a it's a guidebook on life, and a hack on life. I mean, what what more could you want? Yeah, good talk, good talk. Okay, <laughs> now I think all of us at some point in our lives really had a big inflated ego right no well a lot of people you know what i don't want to say all scratch Babe, that you're 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 it's i was subhanallah i was thinking about this today when we were driving here because you know i got a new car and alhamdulillah I, I feel so happy it's the first time in my life i feel a little bit of imposter syndrome and now i understand what people are talking about but i immediately like put that aside and just say alhamdulillah and god's the best but and then you know you look at other cars and you have you know, the the basic cars and cars that are 20 years old and whatever. And then it really dawned on me that, babe, we make up a very small percentile, percentage of the world. There are some people that they cannot dream of even owning a car. No, I'm saying ego. 
I know, but what, but mm. this attaches to that. Not everyone has a big ego, babe. We live in a. But ego doesn't have to be related to materialistic things. It doesn't, but a lot of people, babe, are very humble and beat down by life every day. At some point in one's life, they may have had an inflated ego. I'm not saying. I now. I I agree with that statement. I just don't think it's the. <laughs> Anyways, I agree. Do you get what I'm saying? Majority of middle class people, sure. Yeah. I I think. <laughs> Just based from what I know, I think at some point, whether it's a big part of their life or a small part of their life, I get what ego. you're saying. But but, anyway, let's uh, yeah. Let's, so semantics. Can you can you just define what what is ego? I don't know. What do you think it is? Uh, I I. Okay, this is how I'll define it because I can't give you a a, a um, Merriam Webster. Oh no, of course. You know what I, I mean? want the I want Leila's take on what do you think ego is? What I think ego is from all the lessons that I've learned through Islam, Sufism, my father, all of it, alhamdulillah, is everything that goes against what we stand for. To me, that's the best way I can define ego. It's it's going out of your way to skew religion, to make it work to your advantage. It's going out of your way to vilify astaghfirullah God because you refuse to change your perspective and see it as a blessing and you rather see it as a curse. It's, it's, it's thinking that this dunya works against you and then having the audacity to want it to serve you the best of the best when you've done nothing to earn it. When you go about life that way, to me, that is what an ego is. It's... it's it's entitlement when you've done nothing. That's the best way I can define ego. What about you? What do you think ego is? Hmm. I agree with what you said, by the way, and it's very, very philosophically put. It is. No, it's very, it's very, very nice because oh. I would have never have deeply interpreted what ego means in that way, but you are right. I think ego, I'll just dumb it down on, because, you know, I understand it like this way. But I think ego is when someone or a person um, puts themselves or has this. Or uh, what do I say? Are you trying to say selfish? No, no, no. Someone with a big ego or ego. And by the way, I think ego is false. Yeah, I don't think it's a positive term whatsoever. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I think someone with an ego is someone that does not that d- does not see himself kind of equal or in the same line as people. Do you know what I mean? Someone with ego would put him or herself in a, a pedestal? pedestal that, you know, yeah. or feel, as you've said, feel some sort of entitlement to things or doesn't need to answer to things or just thinks, you know what, even simpler, someone that just thinks they're better than the rest. I agree. I think also it's... A- to, to continue on that, not to be melodramatic, but I, I truly am of the belief that ego is the devil that takes control of the car of your life and crashes you into the side of the road. If, if ego exists, it is inevitable it'll take control of your life. A lot of people will tell you, oh no, I keep my ego in check. But do you? you even understand the monster that is an uncontrolled ego and you think you're able to tame that beast wow hercules <laughs> hercules indeed you know what i mean writing pegasus you think you think pegasus is your ego and you're just hercules taming that beast <laughs> are you crazy um do you believe in giving a person second chances Yes and no. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll do two different parts. I believe in giving people second chances under very specific circumstances. There are certain sins that you cannot forgive, betrayal, especially when it comes to trusting someone in time of need or with your most valuable things like your family or your children. You know, and even in Islam, the Prophet ﷺ dealt with betrayal with a very harsh and assertive hand, you know. So there are sins you cannot forgive. 
But do people deserve a second chance? Most of the time, yeah, because they're lost souls and they're looking for guidance and they're looking for something to, to tether themselves to and they don't know which way is right and which way is wrong, you know? And I cried about this on the internet. I wouldn't have made it without a few helping hands. Did I deserve a helping hand at every time? I didn't think so. God thought I did. So who's... Whose word is is more potent, mine or Allah's, and always Allah's. But um, yeah, and I don't believe in cancel culture. I think it's a joke. You can't cancel me. I'll say this till the day I die. You'll come up with receipts with anything I said in the past. I'll get up and be like, yeah, I did say I was a. Who cares? You know, this this thing of cancel culture and we don't give people second chances. And subhanAllah, it comes from these very hidden trolls on the internet. And like Mike Tyson said, the social media has really given you the audacity to be disrespectful without receiving a punch in the face for it. You know, say this to my face, let me see. Most people wouldn't. Most people you meet every day don't disrespect you face to face. You know what I mean? So this cancel culture, if we're just going to cancel an entire soul and a whole being because maybe they made a mistake or maybe they offended me, who am I? Offend me. So what? Life is akhdu'ata. It's give and take. So what if I felt offended? Who am I? Arasi Rishi? Am I, astaghfirullah, a goddess that, that you have no right to offend me ever and I'm going to roam this earth untouched? <laughs> it makes no sense. So, so what do you mean cancel people? Where, what happened to the rahmah man? What happened to guiding people without, without beating on them and reprimanding their entire soul and shredding them to pieces? It's, it's demonic beyond belief, you know? Do we, do we point out a wrong? Beautiful. But with adab, with ihtiram, and in Islam we call it nasiha. It is with the intention of helping and wanting to see you do better. It's not with the intention of pointing a finger and judging, and I'm holier than thou. It's called nasiha in Islam, and people should really look into the history of that. What's the second thing about giving people second chances? No, I don't believe in giving people second chances when they commit a sin that is unforgivable, that Allah has decreed unforgivable, that my Prophet ﷺ dealt with with unforgiveness. Um, and in his heart, because I would... So actually, I'm not going to say about the Prophet ﷺ. I, I, will read, I will say one of the comments that someone left under my video that said Jesus forgave all the time. And my dad responded, because my dad be coming for the trolls. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad always responds. He does, he's so funny. And he responded, he did, but he didn't linger around them. And that person answered and said, you got me, honestly. Because I can forgive you and not forget, which is بيني وبين ربي, in my heart, in my soul of souls, سامحتك دنيا وآخرة, because I don't want to carry that burden. And I will pray for my enemies that may, hopefully you do better. You know what I mean? But I will not linger around you. So even if the prophets, all of them, عليهم السلام, forgave in this dunya they did not linger around when certain sins were committed because some crimes and some sins are unforgivable does that make sense what do you think about holding grudges babe don't say that word to me why ah, why i watched that horror movie when i was a kid and it destroyed me ah. i couldn't sleep alone for years i couldn't go to the bathroom i couldn't shower i couldn't it traumatized me Okay, so I'm talking about another thing. No, no, I know, but that word I couldn't hear it. I would go into a an, an, like a, a into I don't a remember shock. Remember that movie? One second. I don't even know. It's like The Ring, but worse. Even though The Ring is actually yeah, worse. Yeah, I watched it, but I can't remember it. Khalas, change it's of the topic. one with the don't, serum. Don't. No, no, it's fine. I'm over it. Alhamdulillah, babe. Come on now. I you don't just get... cringe. I know, I know, but over it. So you just took but me by I surprise. I want to hear your take on this. I, I don't want to do a video with that word. Okay. But I will say, I will say it did traumatize me. And uh, and subhanAllah, it was only through... Ah, I remember the movie. She goes to Tokyo. Tokyo. Khalas. Okay, khalas. let's change no, no, the subject. It's fi- no, it's fine. Just I want to say this point because people are obviously going to hear this. It's subhanAllah, babe, I could not eat, sleep, anything without someone being there to me. I was anxious all the time. I, I was almost at any second ready to go into a, P- a PTSD episode. It was horrendous. I watched the movie when I was nine or ten. For years, why did you watch it at nine or ten? Uh, no need to even go into details. I'll tell you That's after. That's wild, dude. Why would I you? <laughs> I saw the DVD. I, I took it home, and my sister and I watched it. It was. Just, <sighs> but anyway, it was Subhanallah. It was only through Allah that I was able to get over it. But that movie almost killed me when I was seventeen. I almost died because of a shock that I went into because of that movie. Wow. Okay. Yeah. This took a turn. 
Yeah. I, I, so that word always just like leaves a sour taste in my mouth. I just don't like it. Okay, let's go to lighter things. Ugh. Do you believe that there is a partner out there for everyone? And is there a possibility that someone has missed their chance in love? Short answer, yes, because in the Quran it says, خَلَقْنَاكُمْ uh, azwajan, which means we created you in pairs. And I think that's beautiful. And, and I think it's the most romantic, just mesmerizing thing in the world. Very Pride and Prejudice, which is our favorite movie. And do I think some people could miss their chance? Absolutely, because there's also... There are people who have a vocation to go in, for example, Christianity, go join, um, become nuns. That's a vocation. It's a higher calling that they have. Who am I to, to negate that, you know, or deny that experience? And then there's also in Islam, maktub, you know, and there are a lot of Muslim men and women out there that never got married. And if that is a nasib that Allah has destined for them, again, who am I to negate or deny that experience? So can you miss your chance? Yes, it could be written and decreed by Allah. And you can mess it up all by your beautiful self. <laughs> Expand on that. Um, I'm going to come for the feminists. <laughs> or give an example as well. Um, I can't give an example because it'll hit too close to home to some of my friends. And I, and I don't want to hurt them that way. I love them truly. But... Th- They bu- yeah, of course you can screw up your chances in this life of finding a partner. Of course you can. When you buy into the, the disgusting ideologies of modern day feminism and the agenda that it pushes and you think that you're going to be hot and sexy and young and thriving and flirty and 30 forever. But that's just, and it's not me being a hater, truly. It's just look at the reality around you. You know, I have so many friends in their mid to late 30s pushing 40, cannot find a partner, want to find a partner. In the best of ways, I'm saying this, they want someone to share a life with and they can't because they lived that lifestyle and they wasted their years and they bought into that. And mind you, also at 35 plus, it's very hard to kind of break certain ideologies so as much as they're trying to be more modest and find Islam again and, and, and live a more virtuous lifestyle, it is hard to break those, those, those cycles and those chains that you wrapped yourself in. And, and, and look at them now. And these are just some of my friends, Mabalik Hal al-Alam and the, the countless stories we hear online, you know? There are women crying on the internet saying, I've been lied to. I've been told, go find a career and be a boss ass bee. And they're like, I'm tired. I'm tired. Bro, it breaks my heart when I, hear, when I hear a woman say, I'm tired. So yeah, you ruin it for yourself and you don't even know you're ruining it for yourself. This really hurts my heart. It really does. Yeah, I hate it, bro. I, I hate it. I, you know when my dad said last time, say, say what you want to no, say. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I just want to say this again. When my dad said last time, nothing breaks his heart more than seeing an old woman still having a job. And he, I know him, he's referring to a janitor or the person in the cafeteria in the mall, you know, picking up after you. Bro, I, I unpacked my suitcase from Fujairah and my lower back hurt. I'm 29, you know? And, and these women, it's, who, who is meant to take care of them? Men. And I blame men now for this. Men that walk around and they see women struggling and they don't have an urge, a deep divine urge to take care of the women around them. Khiba, it's such a disappointment. (laughs) Yeah, wallahi, what a waste of a man you are. It's definitely men, but babe, honestly, it is also women. But these janitors, they're they're very simple people. They weren't living the OnlyFans lifestyle. So that's why I'm saying in this case men. With that specific thing. By the But way, no one blames feminism as much as me. So It's not even only a janitor, babe. It could be a woman in a high position. She's acting all tough and boss. And then I was talking she goes about home that. to a very lonely, lonely thing. And you look into yeah. her eyes and it's just sadness and loneliness. Like, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I agree. It's, you know what, honestly? I agree. It's feminism. For me, the root cause of all of this, of why women are pushing their 40s, and not finding partners is because of feminism. Yeah. Can I, I will say one thing about Go ahead. That. Just one thing. Sure. The feminism thing. This is the first and final time I will say this, okay? 
But to anyone who has the audacity and the nerve to think that I have, alhamdulillah, the blessing and the ability to get on a podcast and talk about beautiful things such as my religion and my Prophet والسلام, and my Islam, and you want to give feminism the credit for why I have been allowed to do this, you are out of your mind. You have lost your marbles. If I said it once, I'll say it again. Islam has given me all the rights I need as a woman. It is not feminism. So you can take that ideology and you can go enjoy it by your lonesome, being a boss bee, when you're 40, desperate for a husband. That is the last time I will say this because I really think it's insanely disrespectful, those girls going like, crazy you're on a podcast and saying feminism isn't the reason no girl this isn't it no girl this is it you want to it blows my mind especially this it blows my mind how many brown girls especially with asia because to me we are one and the same you know what i mean especially in india pakistan that have that are on my comments with this with this aggression and this anger in their in their soul wanting to give feminism the credit for why I'm on a podcast. Bro, they took white people took everything from us. You even want to give them credit for why us Muslims are on a podcast? <laughs> why? Why? Go look into your Islam. It gave you all of your rights. And if your society and people around you are, are skewing religion because adatu taqalid mudin traditions and cultures culture excuse me is not religion so if they're taking that and skewing religion to fit their their agendas please don't take it out on islam and don't go take feminism as your one true hero for the love of god i hate it mm. let's talk about body count sure oh, man, i just hate this word and i we see it being thrown around on social media yeah First of all, <laughs> do you think a woman is judged the same way as a man is when it comes to body count? No, I don't think she is. But I think both should be judged accordingly and in the same way. Y'all talk about, about equality, judge them both equally. Because I've heard multiple girls around me say no i want a man who's more experienced you know i don't want to have to when i'm married teach him anything or you know and at first i was like yeah that makes a lot of sense you want the man to be assertive i want to be like a cute little romance girl. Novels yeah you know movies. romance novels and mm -hmm. whatever and at first i was like yeah that makes sense and then i woke up and got a brain <laughs> and i said no that's kind of disgusting <laughs> um no, he shouldn't because, again, you have to take it back to Islam. And in Islam, it's not, wallahi, he can do whatever he wants and you can't. It's both of you should It's culture. It's both of you should be virtuous until marriage. And, and then I'll take it a step further. And there's a reason this happens. But, you know, you all need Jada Pinkett Smith to tell you and then you believe it, okay? Of when there is a marital act and you come together energies are exchanged you carry that person's soul within you and they carry part of your soul within them i don't need you and your 20 only fans girls in my energy Aha. <laughs> you know so no i don't think they're judged the same but i think they should be i absolutely think they should be because if a, if a girl has a high body count and you look at her like she's yesterday's news and and she's not worth her weight and salt then um the man should be looked at the same because because in Islam, they are looked at the same. The energy that is transferred is the same. The, the, the disgusting residue it leaves on you is the same. It is the same. This is the one and only time I'll tell you men and women are equal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, you know what? Let's, let's go a little bit. Let's go a little bit relationship style, okay? Um... How do you know when a man truly changes for a woman or for you or for anyone? He changes. It is literally that, honestly, I'm as simple as possible. He literally changes. Now, if he was a man who had a certain reputation and a certain Casanova style about him and you see him flip his whole world upside down just to be able to have you as his wife, that is a man who literally changed for you. That's, it, it's that simple. He changes. You don't have to ask for it. You don't have to beg for it, God forbid. It just happens. He changes. Very that simple. Be, but yeah. you know, not a lot of people know. 
I know. But that being said, I will I will say one thing. Sarah, Sarah was telling me the other day, she's like, I need to tattoo on my forehead that being said because it's what you say all the time. <laughs> but that being said, I I wouldn't urge a woman to look or wait for a man to change for her because it's it, it is beautiful yeah there are men out there that are just living their life and waiting for that woman to come along so that they can settle down and change there is a beauty towards that I don't see why I'm even for but I I would rather have the man who has always wanted to be a father has always wanted to be a partner has always wanted to be a husband who understands the value of what that is and and understands where it comes from and and how it needs to be protected and cherished and 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 just given as much love as humanly possible because in Islam that is what is required of us like my dad said last time there is a man is incomplete there is a sense of that in Islam if he is not married it completes you and in Islam getting married is completing half of your deen so as beautiful as that is i don't want the man who just decided one day okay i'll get married cuz Because I like you. No, I want the man who's always wanted it. I love that. Yeah, me too. Okay, just dumb it down for everybody, please. Okay, just <laughs> sure. just, just dumb this down for everybody. Do because best. I think we live in a world where people seem to not understand the basic of things. So just tell me, in your own Leila way or whatever way you want, what do men want in women? And what do women want in men? And why are we not understanding each other? Why is it so hard for us to come together? What's going on? Men need a woman who adds to their status. In, in lamest terms, in the easiest terms, what a man needs in a relationship is peace, serenity, loyalty above all. They need someone who adds to their status. And what's at, what adds to their status is... I can go be the best version of myself out there in the concrete jungle trying to make more money to to secure my family and my generations because men think generationally. And while I'm out and about doing all of that, I know and trust that my woman is at home raising the most beautiful minds because she has the most beautiful of minds. Okay? And a woman needs to be wanted. And it's not as simple as that. I'm not saying women are superficial and they just need to be wanted physically. But she needs to be wanted for her for her loyalty, for her hania, for her mercy, for her peace that she brings to you, for her cooking, for her everything. She needs to be wanted. It's that I look at you and I feel peace and reassur- reassurance that my man wants me. So I can go about and then be the best version of myself. In simplest terms, this is what both sexes need from each other. Now, why are we unable to understand each other? It is because it is done by design. They make men more masculine and they make women more feminine, men more feminine. And we take the worst of masculinity and they take the worst of femininity and then put them together. It's like lesbians and gays. Lesbian women and gay men. They don't, they, there's this, this like um, myth that they don't get along because they have nothing in common. What do you think of men that don't want children, um, even though, let's say hypothetically, let you know what, what do you think of men that don't want children, even though they can't have children? What they can have children? Can. What do you think of it? I think it's horrible. I think you should. Actually, before I think it's horrible. I think it's horrible if you're doing it for selfish reasons, because you just want to live the bachelor, bachelor lifestyle. But I also understand that there are a lot of boys out there that are traumatized from horrible fathers or horrible experiences with their parents, and they don't want to have to have that come back into existence. They don't want to pay it forward that way. And I understand that, you know, that, that kind of trauma. No one will screw you up like the same-sex parent. No one. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. A, a, to a girl, your mother is your most important figure, and to a boy, it's his father. Now, don't get me wrong. The relationship between a son and his mother and a father and his daughter is beautiful, but no one has an effect on you like the same-sex parent. And there are a lot of men out there who had horrible fathers, abusive, neglecting, uh, neglectful, excuse me, um, non-existent fathers. So I don't blame them for saying, you know what, I don't want to redo this. I'm so scared of doing the same thing to my kid, and why would I bring someone into this world and torture them? I understand it. As admirable as you think it is, it's really not. I think there is nothing more admirable than bringing life into this world and breaking that vicious cycle that, unfortunately, someone locked you into. 
And if you are able to pay it forward that way, it's just a blessing in every way. And then besides, who are you going to live this world for, for yourself? You need to have, once, once you have a child, it's different. Your whole life is for them. You can be happy and fulfilled within yourself, but you have someone else that relies on you. It's not just you and your ego. I love that. I think let's wrap it up. I think we need to wrap it up, baby. All right. You gonna? <laughs> um, <laughs> I already shared a poem at the beginning of this, so I don't need to share a poem again. But this is so far again one of my favorite episodes. Oh, it's such a beautiful episode. It's a good one. Honestly, I got. Sorry, you guys can't see me. We're still debating about this, low-key. But I actually got teary-eyed in some of them. Really? Not, not teary-eyed, but misty-eyed, misty? Misty-eyed, misty teary-eyed, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just, I mean, it's it's always fun to talk about religions and, like, men and women and all of that stuff. But, like, sometimes it's just nice to kind of go back to basics, no? I know. I love it. I think one of the things that I love the most about our friendship is how we say alhamdulillah always. Oh, absolutely. For everything. We could be going through like a crisis and you just look at me and you're like, hey. <laughs> I, I think honestly. It was like no panicking. Yeah. <laughs> I think what's beautiful about our friendship is we, now we're not the same person. I don't want to, like we have different frequencies, you and I. We're, we're very unique and different in a yeah. lot of ways, but uh, our foundation, yeah. especially when it comes to our love and, and, um, attachment to Allah is the same and if we have that in common then everything else yeah. is, is okay everything but even else works we're like out. a married couple I mean like just to put that aside like in a funny way we're a married couple yeah. because when I'm panicking or freaking out you're just like smiling in the corner I'm like you're psychotic and you're when crazy. you have like your moment and I'm like oh Leila okay like just I know, calm I know. down <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I will just end this, but I'm going to put you on blast here. My dad looked at us and he's like, I love your relationship. He was laughing. He's like, who's the man or woman in this relationship? <laughs> and this girl had the audacity to say, I'm the man. And then multiple things happened when I looked at her and I'm like, you think you're the man? And she'd just be like, no. <laughs> oh, you, you know are what? a thousand percent the woman in this relationship. You have humbled me. I, will, I am one thousand percent the woman. I could never. No, I have no masculinity in me at all. As you should Zero. be, baby boo. I love it. Being love, you guys, and love you guys. And Leila, thank you again. See you guys next week. Yeah, I can't wait. Yalla, assalamu alaikum. Love you, Reem. Love you, Reem. Sorry. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.